Hey guys, welcome back to the Cambridge United save here on FIFA 22. Dyke Steel apparently feels ignored by me, according to that uh, mark on the, or that news item on the right. Certainly not, my man. You're actually going to play and start the next game against Cheltenham in the Cup. We'll be ending the transfer window today. We've got Cheltenham in the Cup, Coventry, Plymouth, Bournemouth and Swansea. And hopefully we can pick up some points and continue the good run of performances we've had so far. We do have some money left, but at the minute... I don't know as there's anywhere we need to buy at present. We are waiting for uh, Joey Ironside and Oli Burke to return to uh, to return to action. Three and four weeks uh, accordingly between the two of them. So that's good news. They will be back soon. And we're going to try and see if Joey can help us get to the Premier League. If Ironside doesn't cut it up top anymore after his seven-month injury, then we will look to sell Oli Burke, have Joey Ironside as our backup striker, and look to sign a striker in January with whatever funds we have at the time. Which hopefully will be sizable enough. There have been some rather large transfers in this save already so far in this window. One of which you will be very, very intrigued to see. There are rumours of him leaving Paris Saint-Germain in real life this summer. It's not killing Mbappe. But... Uh, Kamavinga has gone to Tottenham, and Nasiri has gone to uh, Pia, to Chelsea, adiemi has gone to Lyon, and... Oh, it's not shown there, that's annoying. Uh, it was on that tile before I advanced. You will notice, for a sizeable fee, Neymar is now in the Premier League. A 33-year-old Neymar has moved from Paris Saint-Germain, an 87 rated, to Liverpool. Neymar in England... We did sign him at Cambridge on FIFA 17 five years ago. But at present, Neymar is in England, but at Liverpool. That is a hell of a signing from the Merseyside team. Now, I would love to get to the Premier League in a timescale meaning that we get to play against Neymar whilst he's still at Liverpool and in their, in their first team. So that's the aim. Really. Now, I am struggling for uh, what I might need to do, actually, in the meantime, is sign a free agent striker because I quite simply can't afford to play Rudoni as regularly as he's going to need to play in today's episode, I don't think, up top without unduly risking an injury for him. But we did have a free agent striker on the list, didn't we? I oh, know it was Tom Knowles who was, uh, who was a right winger. Yeah, we don't have any free agent strikers on the list. So, I'm going to go and pick up a very cheap free agent striker, I think. And then from there, we shall crack on with the rest of the episode. Anyone that's any good. Timmy Abraham, Victor Adebayejo I could pick up. He'd be actually half decent. Let's do that, because he's a former Cambridge man. Victor Adebayejo. I'm not even going to bother scouting him. I am just going to go and pick him up. We were recommended that option by you guys in the comment section of last season when Joey and Ollie Burke picked up their injuries. Unfortunately, I literally had £2,000 in my wage budget and nothing in my transfer budget at the time. So it wasn't an option I could take up, unfortunately. Now, Victor Adebayejo is a player we have signed previously, or not even signed previously, sorry, we have used previously in a Cambridge save when he was at United IRL. We'll sign him just for a year and he's happy with that. Perfect, he will... Fill a role in the squad for the remainder of the season. And then from there, we'll be able to hopefully just let him go. And he'll be able to uh, just do a job for us in these early stages of this season. And if we do pick up another injury, then he will fill for him. We're only out there and we'll throw Victor Adebayejo up top. To be fair, he's 70 rated. That's actually not that bad, Victor, <laughs> Victor Adebayejo there. 77 pace. So, uh, and 70 on shooting. So... Adobe AJ will make his debut on the day that he signs. We've registered him in time. And it... Oh, I just simmed that with the wrong team. Oh. I wanted to sim that with my rotation 11. That's annoying. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you're not going to get the chance to play today. Uh, Dyke Steel, because I ballsed up. Actually, is he going to be good? No. I'll, uh, I'll, play in, I'll play them, that rotation 11, against Plymouth in the league, who've just come up from the league below. But for now, it's time for us to go and play Coventry City in the league. And hopefully, we can continue our good start to the season on the field. And quite frankly, I feel like we had a good start to the season off the field as well. I'm very, very happy with it. 
Did I just, oh, I just put Adebayedo into the wrong bloody team? That's what I did. I saw Rodoni up top and was like, oh no, it's definitely Rodoni. I want to do in this one. Take him out. No, it was Rodoni in this team. I want to take Rodoni out. Well done, Shiz. You're an absolute moron. Oh, so much for being a professional YouTuber, eh? Can't even sort my own bloody team out. Right, let's go and play Coventry and see if we can't continue our, so far, 100% winning start to the season. Right, Coventry do have a player we have on our shortlist in their starting lineup. Alex Bass is at, at goalkeeper with Dabo on the right, Burrows, Pask, Danny Luke, and Martson on the left. Hamer at 80 rated, and Ben Sheaf. At 78 in the midfield with Papaga on the right, Callum O'Hara 80 rated on the left and 77 rated Victor Gjerkeres, who's the man on our shortlist, up top at striker. Uh, Gjerkeres does look very, very good. Hopefully today he has an off day and he can be very, very good in every other game he plays this season and uh, will prove to be a decent player to potentially replace Joey Ironside and Oli Burke if we end up needing to do so before the end of this season. If not, then maybe we will look to him next year, should we get promotion. Well, regardless of whether we get promotion or not, I might look to him next year. But if we do get promotion, we might be able to set our sights slightly higher or slightly better than Gjorka is. Although 77 is certainly a decent rating for uh, a newly promoted Premier League strike or newly promoted from the Championship Premier League level striker. Josh Key with a great delivery. Scott Twine with the header and Alex Bass with a tip over the top. Decent attempt and a good save. Up we go. Doyle has won that. But, yeah, that's not going in. Papaga into Hamer. Gerker is with a nice little flick. Sheaf has options. Here's Hamer. Oh, it's a lovely run by Callum O'Hare. And, thankfully, Doyle does enough. Callum steps in. And we win the ball back again. No goal yet. Although, Kay Gordon could be away down the right. Had to stop and come back for it. Unfortunately, the ball played slightly behind him. Looking for Falconer there. We'll use the left back first. Yep, just able to keep it in. Scotty Twine's going to make a run for me down the line, I think. I hope. Maybe. No. We'll play him in anyway. We'll still get it to him. And Teddy Coles is on the overlap here. And then I should hopefully be able to pull this back to someone. Chapman, for example. Oh, good save by Bass. Two top stops for the, goal for the goalkeeper so far. Chapman with a really good volley there on his right foot. And he could win this header too. He hasn't. Dabo's gotten to it first. Can we get to that with Rudoni? We can't. Calamo here's going to race away at quite some pace with it too. But we'll slow them up. Almost half an hour in. So far, we're really the only ones that have shown any sort of danger in front of goal. So now that I've said that and Coventry are on the attack, watch them score a goal to go 1-0 up. No. <laughs> well held. Pask. Nicely into the path of Sheaf. And O'Hare to Gierkeres. To O'Hare again. Oh, Josh Key should have the pace to deal with that, but hasn't at the minute. Callum O'Hare is getting away from me. That's good footwork from him as well. And Gierkeres' shot come past, come toe poke, nowhere near the goal. Doesn't find a teammate or the back of the net. Well, he, overall, his build-up play has been good so far in this game, Gierkeres. But if that's what I can expect from him in front of goal then maybe he isn't the sort of striker that we need to look for to replace Joey Ironside. He certainly looks like he could be the same sort of player in attributes and play style, but if his finishing is going to be like that, mm, don't know if you're the one, mate. Don't know if you're the one. Scotty Twine into Rodoni. Twine's going to go again. There's nobody there really to cross the ball to, so we are going to have to look back for support. Teddy Coles. I see Chapman, but can't use him yet. We'll use Elijah Stone. Falcon has positioned himself brilliantly. And we'll oh, look for Chapman, but not find him. Nil-nil at the break here against Coventry City at the Rico Arena. No breakthrough yet. O'Hare oh, dinked out wide here to Martson. And Sheaf into Callum O'Hare. A lot of their players come through him in the first half. It's clearly their creative outlet. Martson, he's got some good pace. I think he's only on loan, isn't he, from Chelsea in real life. But here on FIFA at the moment, he is a permanent signing, it seems. Stone will slot that through for Adoni. He had to hold up his run slightly just to wait for the ball to arrive. Falconer is also doing some arriving of his own. And we'll turn and get that there to Chapman. He'll let fly with a long shot. And couldn't quite hold on to it at the first attempt, Alex Bass, but does manage to keep it in his grasp. Second time around, we'll win that with Chapman. And Falconer will get it quickly there to Rodoni, who will look for Falconer again, but picked off well by the defence. Both sides defending well so far in this game. They're having to rely on their goalkeeper quite a bit, though. And, well, he might not be able to stop it this time. He wasn't, but Rudoni missed the target, so he didn't have to. Got to bury that, Jack. Papaga to Dabo. Oh, 
I was ready for that. I was waiting for it, and Teddy Coles will step in, although he's not really got many options here. Hopefully we can get that to the teammate before the Coventry man gets to it. Couldn't have gone the other way because there was no room. Oh, they've played the extra pass. Is that going to work, or is that going to... No, he's going to get to it first. Oh, my God, Michael Cooper. Keeper out of nowhere. Unbelievable second stop from the goalie. That's ridiculous. We should be 1-0 down. How they haven't scored there is a mystery. That's a lovely ball to Scott Twine. Can we punish them for missing that and go and score at the other end? Oh, if Jack Rodoni could head a football, maybe so. Into Hamer. Oh, intercepted. Poor from Hamer. Not the best of passes. We'll get that to Holland and then to Conde. We made three changes in this second half. Oh, I tried to turn with Conde there and his touch was loose, but we've won it back. But it's not going to let me switch to Twine, who was next to the ball, to try and pick up the loose football. His burrows. Oh, Twine gets it this time. I didn't even need to try and change player to him. Rudoni. Oh, trying to squeeze it through the gap to Lancaster. Trying to rush things in the final minutes here, it seems, and not quite getting away with it. So we look to try and maintain our 100% winning record. We need to be careful we don't lose our unbeaten record, which we would have done if it weren't for Michael Cooper in goal. Hamer will take the corner for them with nine and a bit minutes to go. It's a decent delivery too. Gwilt wins the header and Rudoni will chase after this. He's not going to get there first. Hamer with a good chest control. Starting into the box. He's got options. Yes, Conde, well in. Still can't win it back though. Not properly. Slowing them up, but not stopping them. O'Hare. Oh, it's a lovely burst of pace, but we'll get there with Doyle and we will clear it away quickly, Jack. Tries to get it out of his feet. Couldn't do it. Here's Jones. Oh, nice ball through. Scuffed finish from Gierkerez. Mm, unsure on this evidence whether Gierkerez is the main man to go to or not. He has been good in possession, but his finishing has been left wanting quite badly, unfortunately, for him. Maybe it's a one-off. Unfortunately, I can't check his previous season's goal-scoring records to see if actually he does put the ball in the back of the net very often in, at all. We will... Perhaps, oh, there we go. Oh! I don't, I don't know what Gierkeres has to do to score a goal in this game. I don't know what Michael Cooper has to do to concede a goal in this game. We would be nothing without that man in goal. How on earth have I kept a clean sheet in that game of football? I have absolutely no idea. Oh, my God. Michael Cooper's insane. And he's only 76 rated. That was a madness. I don't think I've seen a goalkeeping performance like that for a very long time. That was unbelievable from him. Player returns from injury, but he's probably not going to be available for selection yet, though, is he? Joey's on his way back to first team training, but I bet he's still got that plaster symbol next to him and won't be available for selection. Indeed, he's not. Right, Plymouth next then, which we are going to sim with, and this time I will get it done properly, my rotation 11. There we go. So that we give the first team a bit of a rest between games. We get a 3-2 win as well. We have to rely on Chapman to come off the bench to get the winner. But Victor Adebayejo got one on his debut. And missed a penalty actually. Could have had a brace. And Holland gets one as well. And Chapman gave us actually a 3-1 lead at the time. Before Lewis pulled one back a little bit later on. So our unbeaten run in the championship this, this season continues. And we are currently... Second in the league and in an automatic, never mind, we're third now, in an automatic promotion paying position. I mean, literally, you've missed one game and they're like, why not playing me? It's one game, mate. Chill your bean. There is no necessity to play in absolutely every single game. Woman, I am going to need, sorry, for the rest of the season and continually moving forward. So, Soz. Now, though, as we've dropped to 10... Sorry, dropped to fifth, actually, on 10 points. Only Swansea City with a 100% record so far this season. But we play fourth place Bournemouth next. So win it, and we'll at least go up one position. Oh, what are Peter doing in the playoffs? Yeah, go away. Go away, Peterborough. You're not allowed to be up there. Right then, just double check that Bournemouth have everybody in the right position. And then we'll go to the vitality. Bournemouth in a 4-3-3. Matvey Safanov in goal for them. Jack Stacey at right back. Courtney Howes. Castello, Lukeba and Tirik Mitchell at left back. That's a really strong defensive unit, isn't it, for Bournemouth? Uh, Yerdi Schuten at CDM with Lewis Cook and Philip Billing in the midfield. Jamie Lueling out on the right-hand side, a name I'm not familiar with, if I'm completely honest. Hawkon Evian on the left with Sariki Dembele through the middle. Really strong team. No surprise that they are where they are in the league, but also equally no surprise that we are where we are in the league. 
a game against, well, what is undoubtedly going to be a really tough game against a promotion rival, a direct automatic promotion, if not championship league title rival. The first on paper really proper test this season. Oh, nice ball over the top. Castello Junior out to Philip Billing. Forward to Evian who just keeps it in. Castello, might be Castello actually. I'm not sure on his nationality. Lewis Cook looking to get through the middle. He's got runners around him. Here's Lueling. I presume it's a, a soft W, an English W as opposed to like a German W. Lueling to Schuten. Schuten to Billing. He's an absolute man mountain, isn't he? Philip Billing. Oh, challenge as well on Kay Gordon. Teddy Coles has to get in the way and Chapman too. They press like mad, Bournemouth have done in the opening stages, especially on possession loss. They press like absolute crazy. And if they don't do it right, we will split them up or we'll split them open even. And Twine's at the back post. Oh, his header. He did get there first, but his header's poor. Oh, no, it was meant for Radoni. Well, they can press as much as they like, but if I can't actually do what I want to do in the final third with any sort of conviction, then they might actually still be safe. But certainly they're dangerous going forward, as you've seen there. And, well, judging by that Coventry game, I'm not on my best form. We had to rely very heavily on our goalkeeper in that last fixture. Don't know whether that needed the save, actually. It might have been going wide, but Philip Billing draws the save out of the keeper. Dembele receives it short. There's the man on the edge of the box there, but he's absolutely done Josh Key there. All ends up. Now he's using the man on the edge of the box. Shooting, Lueling, Lewis Cook. This is unbelievable from Bournemouth. And the turn as well. Oh, and it falls back to Billing despite getting a good block on it. 1-0 Bournemouth in the 30th minute. We trail on the south coast. Billing. Oh, a lovely ball. Didn't see that angle for a pass. Here's Evian again. Oh, drilled into Tyrick Mitchell. And here's Shooting in that holding role. He's kind of pulling the strings a little bit in that deeper deeper position. Just get that to the goalkeeper and then we'll get rid of it, please. Thank you. Trying to win that well, actually. And Falconet will lift this for Rodoni, who should have the pace to get on the end of it. And does. I need his touch to be better. Just couldn't get it under control. It kept bobbling up in front of him. And unfortunately, a good breakaway attempt. It's thwarted by just a little bit of a lack of a first touch. Newling to Stacey. Bournemouth are going to hold their 1-0 lead till half-time at the very least. They've been exceptional in possession and pretty untouchable at times with the ball at their feet. I've had to rely on them making mistakes more so than me actually getting a foot in, which shows the sign that they are a very capable side. I wouldn't be surprised if they had 60-plus percent possession in that first half. We'll have a look. In, well, nearly 70% possession in that first half. Need to step your game up, Cheesenoid. To be fair, he did the right thing in holding his run there because he would have gone offside. Falcon is in, though. Oh, it's, the pass is so bad. The pass is so bad. I need that in the channel. I need that in the channel ahead of him, in front of him. He's running diagonally from left to right here. And I need that to just go into the gap where you can see he's running towards the D. And he's played... You can see where I'm trying to play it. And he's played it there. Oh, it's killed me. Really good chance to break on Bournemouth there that we haven't been able to take. I would have expected better of my man in midfield there. It's a lovely header. And Falconer will look to break away. But Bournemouth have been so tough to break down in this game so far. Rudoni. Now we'll look for Falconer. He's in now. And Kirk! Captain Kirk at the rescue in the 63rd minute. He's staking a claim to play a lot more regularly than initially I'm planning on using him when Joey Ironside retire, returns. He's really proving to be quite the player, Kirk Falconer. Buried beautifully on his five-star weak foot, which he started with. I didn't train his weak foot. He came in as a four-star, five-star player. And certainly, we are very thankful of that because I needed that weak foot there to bury that chance. We are level against Bournemouth. And now, maybe, we might be able to turn this game well and truly around. Here's Twine. I'm going to try and pull this back to Rodoni if I can. Get the turn in. Oh, I get lucky. No, the keeper gets lucky. Oh, I can't believe it. Shades of Mike Cooper in the last game. As somehow the goalkeeper keeps that out. On the floor, nowhere, no awareness of where the ball was. And it just hits him and stays out. 
But to be honest, after the last game against Coventry, I can't really say anything, can I? But two rebound goals for Bournemouth certainly will do enough to piss you off. We're behind again. Nice tackle by Doyle. Bournemouth get lucky again. Sariki Dembele fouled. And it's a really good position for a free kick, this. Billing is going to be the man to take it with making some changes. Conde's coming on, as is Adebayejo. And Rodoni... Whoa! That's wild from Billing. Adebayejo's gone up top and Rodoni's dropped to Cam. Conde has come on in midfield. Let's see what we can do in the final 13 minutes to try and make sure we don't lose our unbeaten record this season. Conde has Adebayejo making moves in front of me. I'll go to Conde again. And the two substitutes here could absolutely turn the game around. Cade Gordon's offside, though. Good physicality by Conde shown there. Now Elijah Stone to Rodoni. Oh, good interception or tackle by Costello. There is the option here for Josh Key. Gordon. Oh, no. Cade Gordon's pass isn't good enough. We could have got him in round the corner. We could, at the end of the game, been singing once again in an RTG. He's magic, you know. We've got a dear boy, Joe. But unfortunately, we don't get the chance to sing that song because he didn't score. Oh, we lose on the South Coast in a game that I felt like I fought hard enough in to have deserved a point. Really unlucky not to score a second. On the uh, the counter-attack going the other way, they then go and score their second. Deflected and then a rebound first goal. Shot blocked and then tackled as the ball got to him for the second goal. Really frustrated not to get anything from that. Really frustrated not to get anything from that. Um, I don't, we don't care about that. Well, we do care about the Carabao Cup. But what we care more about is getting to the Premier League. So I'm going to sim the Southampton game and we'll play the Swansea one because that's just what makes most sense at this stage of our career in this save. But we have managed to somehow beat Southampton away from home. Chapman with a goal. Adebayejo wins it. He's certainly scoring goals in simmed games. He just couldn't do it for me in the final stages of that Bournemouth one. But not to worry. Now Ollie Burke is on his way back from injury. But the question we're asking ourselves is... Is Joey Ironside available for the game against Swansea? At present, the answer is no. It would be harsh to drop Falconer. But at the minute, I do, we need to see if Joey can still cut it. Are we going to get the chance to play Joey? Is he going to be fit? Plays away on international duty. Michael Gwilt has been called up by Wales. Fair enough. Uh, morale is slightly low, so we will go to that pretty much press conference. Joey's still not available, unfortunately. No Joey Ironside for this next game. Let's go and speak to the media, and then we shall welcome the Swans to the Beaverwood. So five at the back for Swansea. They are played 5-1-5 so far this season. So if the Bournemouth game was a test, this is surely going to be another level. Andy Fisher in goal for them. Rushesha at right back. Latabodier at centre back alongside Ben Cabango, who's much higher rated than anybody else they've got at the moment in their defensive line. Finley Burns and Ryan Manning at left wing back. Oliver and Cham and Matt Grimes in the middle with Morgan Whitaker on the right, Jamie Patterson on the left and Joel Hero through the middle at 78 rated. They've got some options on the bench as well, some decent options for, of uh, capable ability to be able to come off the bench and make an impact. That's a loose ball by Swansea. They have been poor in possession so far in the opening 15 minutes. It's not the first time they've gifted me the ball back and given it away. Here's Rodoni. A little bit of a stumble, but does find Cade Gordon. Oh, Cabango, though. The interception's there. In anticipation to step in and steal that away was very good indeed. Pirro to Patterson to Grimes. And back to Cabango again. Matt Grimes. Out wide. They're using the ball a bit better this time, Swansea, aren't they? Josh Key probably could have got to that if he tried. Nice turn by Manning, but we'll get there with Josh Key. And we'll... Leave the defensive third and push to try and get into the forward third again. Teddy Coles. Oh, Oliver and Sham tucks that under possession very nicely. Should have made the pass, though, to be honest, Teddy Coles, who's actually up to 81 rated now, I think. Whitaker got him on strings at the moment, though. Here's Ruchesha inside to Whitaker and across to Grimes and into Pirro. And Swansea lead by a goal to nil. 
not been defensively solid enough so far in today's episode, have we? Really frustrating to go 1-0 down again. But they worked it well on the right-hand side into the middle. And Joel Pirro with his third goal in five games gives Swansea the lead. Stone and Twine. Building slowly, but building well. Chapman is Rudoni. Out wide, finds Twine. Could cross it in here. We'll find that gap and then find Chapman. Draws a good save out of the goalkeeper, but no goal. No goal. Not yet. Stone with the delivery. Doyle's up. He's on his own. It's a good header. Didn't have much power behind it, unfortunately. Keeper making a good save. A comfortable save. Again. That's the first time we've really threatened their goal, though. Oh, and they nearly gave me the ball immediately there in a really dangerous position. We said earlier on, Swansea have occasionally been quite poor in possession and given it away. Certainly been nowhere near as good on the ball. Oh, so close on a couple of occasions. They've been nowhere near as good on the, in possession as Bournemouth were, but they just keep getting a little bit lucky with it, as you've seen there. On two occasions, go, I could have stolen it back and really put them under a lot of pressure. Ruchesha. Teddy Cole's just about deals with it, but Jesus, that was hard to try and get it back. Falconer will dink this out wide. I'll just nod this down with Cade Gordon, who hopefully will go again. I can't play it into him, and I've given the ball away in a dangerous position. Now Patterson has options, one of which is to just go for a run. Quilt can't outmuscle him. I've got it back to Patterson again. Looked like he was winding up for a cross there, but no. Finds Manning. Here's Grimes. I'll have that, thank you. Gwilt will clear behind, but only for a corner. Is it to be Swansea 2, Cambridge nil before half-time? We are in stoppage time now in this first period. We should win this header, and we have done. Gwilt rock solid at the back as ever. Lovely little flick. 1-0 down at the break. Oh, given away again by Swansea. Oh, but because it's gone out of play, they're going to get the chance to get all of their men back. Oh, they know we've, we've taken a quick throw, but to be fair, look at the amount of white shirts back here. They have got most of their men back. Renato Sanchez has moved to Chelsea, it seems. It's a good signing for the Blue Boys. Oh, it's an excellent ball. Oh, but Falconer just doesn't quite have the pace to get to it. An extra two sprint speed, and he probably gets there. Up we go. How's your leap? Ah, oh, not good enough to beat Oliver and Cham in the air. Oh, that's an excellent pass. Played at pace through the gap. Pinpoint precision. Whitaker back to Rochesha. Trying to win it back. Peterborough. Still picking up points. Don't tell me. Peterborough United are going to get to the Premier League before I do. <laughs> I'm not sure I could cope with that. Nice ball out wide here to Ryan Manning. Excellent first touch to get past the defender. He's got many options here. Matt Grimes also has plenty to choose from. It's a cut out wide to win. Cham Piro. It's a second for him. It's a second for Swansea. It's 2-0 to the away team. And this is why they're top of the league with a 100% win percentage. Back there to Stone. Chapman, Falconer, Rudoni. Oh, just not got the space. Falconer, Rudoni. Well blocked. Just can't find a way past this Swansea back line. Got the top of the table with every game won so far and the best defensive record in the league. And... It has absolutely shown in this game just how good they've started the season. Whether they keep it up for the full year is questionable. But for the time being, they are untouchable at the minute, Swansea. And very much bossing me off this pitch. Just haven't been able to test their goalkeeper enough. But they've been very, very good, Swansea. Easily the best team we've played against so far this season. We've had two really tough back-to-back -back games here. Bournemouth were superb if slightly lucky in front of goal Swansea have been superb and ruthless in front of goal two of the best sides we've played all save let alone just this season this performance from Swansea on top of that performance from Bournemouth just shows us the sort of level we're going to need to aspire to if we're to get ourselves to the Premier League for next season we're still very much in the hunt and a little early wobble like this is very much overcomable doesn't make it any less, frus less frustrating in the moment, though. Nice tackle. Would really genuinely only be a consolation goal now if we are able to get something. It's nice football, though, to work the opportunity, maybe. Twine. I'm contemplating 
contemplating, because Falcon has made such an impact, and Twine just hasn't, although admittedly Twine is out wide. Oh, I was just about to dink that, looking for Cade Gordon on the wing. Obviously, I get a lot more from my central players, striker and cam, than I get from my wide men. But Scott Twine still hasn't really hit the side with any real major impact. He was re relatively invisible last year. I am contemplating, and it won't happen in this window, but please do leave me your feedback. Contemplating, selling Twine, moving Rudoni back out left so that Falconer can stay in the starting lineup with his potential to be special, and Joey Ironside comes back in at striker. It would then offer us the opportunity potentially to sell Twine in January to raise funds to replace Joey if Joey's not good enough still. Or just offer us more options off the bench and Twine could be utilised elsewhere. But with Falconer being as good as he has been and having the potential he does, I feel like I kind of need to prioritise him. It's a really tough, really tough decision at the minute. I don't want to change formation. I'm happy with the, with the way we're set up. I don't want to change the tactics at all. I think it's just the playing personnel Need a little bit of, uh, of a tweak. Rodoni has much more pace than Twine. 91 acceleration, 86 sprint speed compared to 84, 82 for Twine. And whilst Twine was exceptional in League One for MK Dons, he's not been exceptional for us in the championship. He was played left wing for MK Dons as well. It's key to point out he wasn't utilised at striker to get the goals that he did in League One two seasons ago. He was used out wide left and got those goals. But... Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to cut it for us here. He, maybe I keep him. Maybe I do keep him. And I use him instead as my backup striker. And we sell Adebayejo. And we sell Oli Burke. Keep Joey Ironside. And use Scott Twine as our backup cam striker wide man. Maybe that's the option. Maybe Twine becomes the new Oli Burke. And Joey goes up top. Rudoni goes up wide. And Falconer stays at cam. And then if we do decide we want to sign another striker then we just have a look at the squad in the position that it's in right i think actually that's probably my priority well we'll, we'll throw joey back in when he's able to go back in and i'll drop twine to the bench and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't and we'll just play it by ear but for now let's end the transfer window shall we um you may have seen actually you probably won't have seen because i'm in the way there's been a, a big deal go through um, Mason Mount has gone from Chelsea to Real Madrid for £160 million. Yep. £160 million. An 89 rated Mason Mount is at Real Madrid for £160.4 mil. My God. Right, let's see what else happens on transfer deadline day. Like we say, we're not looking to really move anyone on. We might, if I get a bid for Scott Twine, then maybe it would make my mind up or help make the decision a little bit easier. Well, I'm not going to impulse and make a change. Murring transfer bid, but we'll uh, reject that for now because he's going to be my backup goalkeeper for the rest of the season until we get a um, thingy back from loan, who's hopefully going to grow very, very well out on loan. We saw what, 800 million spent, now over a billion, and there's still four hours left to go. Transfer deadline day. Top three deals haven't changed since we started deadline day, but you can see there's a number of, well, still sizable deals going through. Luis Felipe, Liverpool to Bayern for 40 mil. Tadebo from Leicester to Dortmund for 47.8. And Boadu from Hoffenheim to Atalanta for nearest makes no difference, 50 million pounds. Another 200 million spent in that one hour. Bid from Payers Faith for Falconer. Now, Kirk, I think, is going to be another player that we add to the block offers list. Another big, nearly £50 million move. Seivald from Red Bull Salzburg to... Pardon me, Athletic Club to Bilbao. We'll have a look through championship sides, actually, and see Rafael Varane from Real Madrid to Liverpool. Look out, £51 million. Why is every transfer seemingly about £50 mil? £1.6 billion spent. Oh, we do get a bid for Twine. That would have helped make my mind up, but it's with an hour to go. So there's no way that that transfer goes through. I will accept it for the sake of accepting it. Watford gutted. 
I do like that, actually. In this save, we noticed last year when Crystal Palace came down from the Premier League, they got rinsed in the opening transfer window. The same has happened to Watford here. The same has happened to Watford. They've been gutted from the inside out when they've gotten relegated from the Premier League. Bournemouth have signed or let go, sorry, of Silver. Let's have a look at any other big deals in this window or massive movements in this window. Ooh, Scott has left Bristol City. I'll be intrigued to know where he's gone. We've obviously done a little bit of business, but not a massive amount. We were able to do a couple of player swaps, which helped us. Not much news to bring you for most of the sides. Morley was involved in that Dyke Steel player swap, wasn't he? Norwich have signed Lopez and let Norman and Gunn go. Forrest have signed Reese. Peter have signed Phillips. Plymouth done nothing after promotion. Preston, QPR and Reading all doing nothing in the January transfer window. Laura and Campbell, the two signings made by Stoke. Obafemi out at Swansea. Watford absolutely gutted from the inside out. Liner, Dennis, Okoy, Ritzy, Ngakia all out. Probably more so as well. Bjorkan in at, uh, at Vicarage Road. West Brom have done nothing. So that will bring to an end the transfer window at the beginning of season five. Although I will, of course, show you all of the transfers made. or well, the biggest ones, at least. Porto a bid for Lancaster. I don't know as I want to sell Jack. I'd like to keep him at the club, really, because he's an IRL player that's grown to a level where we could probably expect to get some level of performance from him for the rest of the save. Hayward is... Don't know, probably. Uh, at this stage, let's see if we've got anything in the monthly scouting reports. We're looking for wingers and attackers, weren't we? So far, nothing that stands out from Ireland, unfortunately. Anything from England here? 70 to 94, 5 foot 7. We'll give that another month just to wait and see where you're actually playing. 75 to 94, only 500 grand though. That's the thing. Like, we're going to have. The only way players are going to come in now and actually stand any chance of getting into the. The squad is if they come in and they're valued the same way that the goalkeeper was at like three plus million and they're in the late 60s to get a loan spell and then hopefully get the growth to come in. Like Joseph Ingram, I'll call him up, but I don't think he's going to grow in time to be able to be used in the save because we unfortunately have just grown too, grown too well and gotten too far away from crossing curve dribbling. So it looks more like a winger, doesn't he? Then he does a centre forward. So we'll change his development plan. He's left footed. So let's make him a left winger. Although left wing might take a while. No, because he's got... I thought it might do because he's got uh, low shooting stats. But no. Left wing is where we will play him. Or where we will train him. Maybe left mid? No, left wing. Let's do left wing. Okay. Well, that's all of our business done. Let's have a look and see the transfer history in the window. Because, well, there was rather a lot of... Massive deals went through there. So Mount, Camavinga, Lautaro Martinez to Barcelona was another big one that we didn't quite highlight at the time. Matteo Genduzzi, 94.4 million pounds for an 86 rated Genduzzi from Sevilla to Leeds. Bastoni to Arsenal for 91 million. And Naziri to Chelsea we saw, Adeyemi to Lyon we saw, Christian Romero from Lyon to Manchester United. Obviously moved on from Spurs at some point previously in this save. Nuno Mendes to Atleti from Napoli. You'd be with Canate to Atletico Madrid as well, as Jose Maria Jimenez leaves later on in the window, presumably because they brought Canate in, although he's still able to uh, only make a loss of £1 million and improve like that. That's nuts. That's excellent business from Atletico Madrid. Jeremy Frimpong to Manchester United. Neymar, as we saw, to Liverpool. Daniel Marlin to Everton. His concert to Brighton from Real Sociedad. I thought that was the other way around when it was mentioned in an in-game little menu. Urien Timber to Villarreal. 85-rated Urien Timber. Looks very, very good indeed. Kempembe to Spurs. Rodrigo Sanchez to Chelsea. Jose Gaia to AC Milan. Marcos Urenti to Fiorentina. Neuhaus moving around in Germany. Uh, anything else regarding the Premier League? Wesley Fofana has gone from Lazio to Arsenal for 61 million. Harvey Elliott is at PSG. Wow. Vitinha to Bucin Gladbach. Fabinho to Arsenal from Liverpool for 58.3 million pounds. That's a big deal. Sangare to Betis. Juan Bissaka to Real Madrid. Never did I think I'd see the day. Milan Skriniar from Manchester United to Barcelona. Selling a lot of their defenders, aren't they? Manchester United. Casemiro to Liverpool at 33. They're seemingly favouring the older player at the minute, Liverpool. Verratti from Manchester City to uh, Atleti. Oli Skip to Leeds from Bayern. 
How on earth he got a move to Bayern? I've no idea. Ben White from Inter to Chelsea, 85 rated. Joel Pedro to Manchester United. Trincao to PSG from Barcelona. Lukaku at 32 to Barcelona as well. Varane to Liverpool as we saw. Oscar to Milan from Monaco. Not sure how good Oscar is actually. An 83 rated regen. Mattia Pellegrino, 83 to Monaco from Lons. He might be someone we could keep an eye on for when we get to the Premier League. And the smallest deal on this list is Ravella. Is it Nicola Ravella? Nicola Ravella. 84 rated from Juventus to Leicester City. When the smallest deal on that list is 50 million, you know it's been quite a transfer window. We currently sit ninth in the table after a couple of frustrating results, but the teams we lost to are first and second. So that shows you exactly why we lost to them and certainly gives you every reason to believe that it's not doom and gloom. And certainly we are very much still in an automatic promotion hunt at this early stage. We have Watford, West Brom, Norwich, Middlesbrough and Fulham tomorrow. And that's where we will pick up for today. That's all for this opening well, actually, second episode of Season 5. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you drop the video a like, of course. Ensure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on more. This should hopefully be our promotion season to the Premier League. That is the plan. That is the aim. Let me know about that Kurt Faulkner, Scott Twine, Rudoni and Joey Ironside thing. So I think that might be the answer to try and get the most out of Faulkner. Because he could grow exponentially from here. And I don't really want to drop him to bring Joey in, move Rudoni to Cam and keep Twine on the left. I'd rather move, that's my preference, is to move Rodoni to the left, keep Falconer at Cam, have Joey up top, and then if we need to buy a new striker, which we undoubtedly at some point will, then Joey will come out, new striker will go in, and Falconer will be able to keep his spot at Cam. He's only five foot six, so he's not going to cut it at striker, but certainly he's had a decent start to his domestic season here with us. He's up to 74 already, and fingers crossed, with potential to be special, and five goal contributions in seven games so far this season, He's going to be a star for the future for us, but, well, he could be a star for us now if you guys agree with my p potential plan. We'll wait and see what you say. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow as ever.